Hello everyone welcome to our sports news channel. Here you are always well informed. I ask you to subscribe, leave your like and thank you. Something feels wrong about what's happening for running backs in the NFL. As teams approach training camp later this month, four respected veteran rushers remain free agents, seemingly with little interest. Kareem Hunt wasn't re-signed by the Browns after his contract expired, while Ezekiel Elliott, Leonard Fournette and Dalvin Cook were released by their respective franchises to create salary cap space. None of the four has signed elsewhere. Popular veterans getting cut toward the tail end of their careers is nothing new, but the age at which these players have become free agents stands out. Cook, Elliott and Hunt are 27. Fournette is 28. 27-year-old stars at other positions are years from being cut candidates. No team would dream of moving on from Miles Garrett, Debo Samuel or Buda Baker, each of whom is 27. Those 27-year-olds who play other positions are in the primes of their careers. Meanwhile, 27-year-old running backs are being portrayed as fossils hanging on to any hope of a meaningful NFL career for dear life. Players are getting squeezed on both sides. With the first round of April's draft as an exception, draft capital used on running backs continues to fall. Bijan Robinson and Jomar Gibbs became the first running back duo to be selected in the top half of round one since Fournette and Christian McCaffrey in 2017, a feat that happened far more often in the past. In 2022, no back came off the board in the top 32 picks, something that didn't happen even once over a nearly 50-year span between 1964 and 2012. Teams are using less draft capital on backs than ever before, and they appear to be more aggressive in moving on from their lead backs once they sign extensions. A league that was once built around star backs dominating offensive workloads and competing for MVP awards now feels like something entirely different. When the Falcons and Lions drafted Robinson and Gibbs, they had to bring up the possibility of the backs as receivers around the formation to justify their choices. Backs who have received the franchise tag, such as Josh Jacobs this year, or who are approaching the time when they might earn their first extension, such as Najee Harris, are publicly wondering about whether running backs are getting a fair shake. It's reasonable to wonder whether star high school and college players should even consider playing running back when other positions offer more professional upside and stability. None of this is brand new, but the stress on running backs to produce and get paid before they're cast aside feels more acute than ever. Has there been an even more significant shift in recent years than what has been perceived? Is it a case of analytics run amok? Are teams being foolish in how they're valuing even the best backs? And is there any way to break the cycle and get running backs paid more money in the decades to come? There's no single factor dictating the situation with running backs, but let's establish the playing field for the position before we focus on the four backs left in free agency. When did the shift away from valuing star running backs happen? Ask 10 people this question and you're likely to get 10 different answers. The most recent example was a person who is eminently qualified to answer it, former Chargers and Broncos back Melvin Gordon, who won a Super Bowl last season without ever playing a snap for the Chiefs. Gordon tied it to Rams coach Sean McVay and star back Todd Gurley, suggesting McVay had regretted paying Gurley and had decided to rotate his backs from that point forward. I certainly think the Rams regret giving Gurley an extension in 2018, as we'll discuss in a minute, but the tactic reared its head before Gurley's downswing and hasn't reflected how LA has used its back since. McVeigh has been comfortable using Cam Akers as something close to an every-down back when the coach and his back are simpatico, with the 2021 postseason win over the Buccaneers, in a game in which Akers was the worst player on the field and the final few weeks of last season as examples. Akers, a second-round pick in 2020, isn't getting paid significant money on his rookie deal, and McVay isn't rotating his backs for the sake of keeping their value down. From my perspective, 
The running back value conversation dates back to McVeigh's old boss and one of the league's best offenses. Mike Shanahan's Denver teams produced huge numbers with a series of unheralded rookies, undrafted free agents and journeymen rotating through at running back. The most famous and successful back of the bunch, Hall of Famer Terrell Davis, was a sixth-round pick in 1995. Other backs weren't able to fully reproduce Davis's incredible numbers after he went down injured, but Olandis Gary, 1999, Mike Anderson, 2000, and Ruben Drowns, 2004, all had big seasons with anonymous pedigrees and modest deals. Clinton Portis, a second-round pick in 2002, played well enough to inspire a swap for Hall of Fame cornerback Champ Bailey, with the Broncos even getting an extra pick in the process. Shanahan eventually left Denver after the 2008 season, but it only created more opportunities for unknown backs elsewhere. When his son, Kyle, took over as the offensive coordinator in Houston in 2008, the Texans immediately got solid production out of rookie third-round pick Steve Slayton. Two years later, the offense thrived when undrafted free agent Arian Foster made the job his own and became arguably the league's best back between 2010 and 2013. By then, the Shanahan family had moved on to Washington and begun to coax three straight 1,000-yard seasons out of sixth-round pick Alfred Morris.